Good day class. Let's now talk about lesson 4 of unit 10. This time, we look into the life and the works of Edith L. Tiempo. So in this particular lesson, we are going to examine yet again another National Artist Awardee for Literature. But we are going to look into specifically the many works and contributions of Philippine literature by Edith L. Tiempo. We also look into her life, her many works and accomplishments, and what made her a distinct, recognized National Artist Awardee for Literature. So, I want you to jot down important notes of our discussion and make sure that you are able to jot them down comprehensively for you to study, as well as the questions that may come during the course of our discussion. So, without much ado, Let's now begin talking about the life and works of Edith L. Tiempo. For this lesson, our objectives are the following. First, to recognize canonical works of Edith L. Tiempo and evaluate Edith L. Tiempo's works through writing. In this lesson, I want you to take note on what sets apart the works of Edith L. Tiempo among her contemporaries and how it is going to be evaluated objectively and comprehensively. So in this lesson class, we are going to answer this essential question. If you were to become a national artist like Edith Tiempo, what significant contributions would you like to make to help develop our country's literature and why? Quite pageant-like ang pangutana, no? But then again, it's a very important notion that if ever you become a national artist like Edith Tiempo, what are the significant contributions that you would like to make that will develop our country's literature? Alright, now with that being said, let us now talk about the many vocabulary words that we are going to unlock during the course of our discussion. First, we have rhyme. Rhyme is a noun which is or which means an archaic word for rhyme. Example, in the original manuscripts for Shakespeare's plays, rhyme is often spelled as rhyme, R-I-M-E. Second is tempered. Tempered is an adjective which means the state of having been neutralized or softened. Example, example. Simon's stern warnings are the cause of mischievous Dennis's tempered behavior. Third, hearsay. Hearsay is a noun which means a belief that disrespects or counteracts a particular religion. Example, in the old days, spreading what the church deemed as hearsay could land you in jail. Fourth, bold. Bowl is a noun which means fine and reddish clay. Example, Mary spent the afternoon by the river collecting the bowl she would need for, glide, for gilding, gilding. Fifth, slacked. Slacked is an adjective which means loosened. Example, don't climb into the hammock yet. The ropes are still slacked so you'll fall. And sixth is mir. Mir is a noun which means slushy and wet soil. Example, you should wear rubber boots while walking through the mir or you'll get, th or you'll get your hems dirty. So these are the different vocabulary words that we are going to come across. The discussion of the life and works of Edith Chempo. Now, let us learn about the National Artist Awardee for Literature, her life and her many works that inspired Philippine literature. This time, let's talk about Edith L. Chempo. Edith L. Chempo was born in Bayumbong, Nueva Vizcaya on April 22, 1919. She grew up in various parts of the Philippines and used these places in her stories. She married Edilberto K. Tiempo, a Philippine novelist. They have a daughter and a son. She obtained her bachelor's degree from Siliman University 
in Dumaguete City in 1947. She received an international writing fellowship from the University of Iowa and finished her master's degree in the said university as well. In 1958, she earned her doctorate degree from the University of Denver. She was a recipient of the Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature. Edith L. Tiempo won first prize from the Cultural Center of the Philippines in 1979 for the novel His Native Coast. In 1988, she was honored with the Gawad Pambansang Alagad ni Balagtas. In 1999, she was awarded the National Artist Award for Literature. Edith L. Chempo's poetry usually is characterized by a remarkable fusion of craftsmanship and insight and substance and style. Described as an intricate verbal transfiguration of significant experiences, Edith L. Chempo's poetry uses language that is descriptive but unburdened by scrupulous detailing. The, this time, we are going to examine one of the many works of Edith L. Tiempo entitled The Pestle. So in this example, I want you to look closely on the work and style of Edith L. Tiempo's poetry. Now, I will read to you the example of one of the many works of Edith L. Tiempo, The Pestle. This is taken an excerpt from The Origin of the Moon and the Stars, which is a Philippine myth. In the beginning, the sky hung low over the earth, and the woman took off her beads and her crescent comb and hung them up on the sky, the more freely to work. As her pestle struck the blue arc, again and again it began to rise and rise. An excerpt from the story of creation, which is a Philippine myth. The bamboo split and outstepped Malakas and Maganda, the first man and woman. On the blank, the wash stick is beating, beating out time. Time and wise birds and riddles in a wooden rhyme. Why should he listen just to cross its dark message? If he, a good smith, beating his tempered muscles into plows, and she, folding her, will, her mildewed safety between bleach vows, once wrought for beauty and strength, if they be splinters from the cracked bamboo, they shouldn't listen to that crude tattoo. The grapevine, its heresies through some crumbling bowl, why should they? They, the divine stems, yet strange, he stokes the fire. Burns himself in a thousand spots. He is not done. And she, he sees her rinsed out, fears a hole. White lines slacked, flopping through the mire. Old woman, best leave the wash stick in the sun. The pestle pushed the thigh-bone comb, and the beads of baked clay high, too high. Our tough hands shake, and our sweaty lips smirk and lie. We had stored our treasures in a maggoty home. So this is a poem by Edith Jempo entitled The Pestle, wherein she is emphasizing on the creation story and the origin of the moon and the stars wherein there is an integration of her work to this particular um, excerpt from these Philippine myth. So as we further discuss the life of Edith Jempo, we need to understand how we are going to utilize her poems to commemorate our Filipino beliefs and culture. In that, we ask what is the importance of not forgetting our roots. What do you think is the importance of being able to always continue to look and to remember and honor our roots as a nation? Right? The poems of Edith Chempo helps us commemorate those Filipino beliefs and culture. 
Now, if you have questions that you would like to raise during our feedbacking session, make sure to jot them down so that we can be able to discuss them further when we have our online classes. That's all.